On the heels of you know who's ex executive uh, police uh, order, sorry y'all, on the heels of his uh, police reform, uh, Sen Senator Tim Scott revealed the GOP bill on the reform that they called the Justice Act and why this is very personal for him. Take a look. Communities of color and people like myself, uh, I've told my story several times, stopped seven times in one year. Uh, that has been said a lot, but I was stopped this year uh, driving while black when I got a warning ticket for using, failing to use my turn signal earlier in my lane change. And so this issue continues, and that's why it's so important for us to say that we hear you. We're listening to your concerns. So do you think they heard anything, Sonny? What, what, do, you, what do you think of the bill? Do you, did they hear him say what, what happened to him and why it was in, really dumb? Well, I, I, it's, it just seems to me that Trump's executive order incentivizing police reform will not incentivize police reform. That is not what is required here. Uh, and, you know, what I think he wanted was a photo op with some of the families um, of, of black unarmed men that have been killed uh, during police encounters. And he did not get that because although the families did have a meeting with him, if you listen to what the family said, Whoopi, they said that uh, there were a lot of platitudes mentioned, but nothing real, nothing tangible. And they did not come out with him for a press conference. And so I, I think that actually says a lot that is <coughs> extremely telling. But the other thing is when you look at his mm -hmm. executive reform, uh, his executive order, it just doesn't do anything. He's asking departments to share, police departments to share information on officers' misconduct. I mean, if you let an officer or police departments grade themselves, they get an A every single time, right? And so you really need a national <laughs> database. You need an over, you need someone to oversee them. And so um, it's just sort of right. much, it's very fluffy. It's much ado about nothing. It's not tangible. It's not right. real. Okay. Joy, were you taken by what Senator Scott had to say and, and, his, and what he was revealing about his own experience? Well, yes, I was. Um, senator Scott, who was the only African-American senator in the GOP, said that America is not a racist country. Uh, then he goes on to talk about how he was pulled over by the police five or six times, and that one of the times, or the last time, was for not turning on his signal, his turn signal, fast enough. Really? I mean, exactly when are you supposed to turn that turn signal on? I don't know when that is. Right. And yet he was stopped. Right. I doubt I would have been stopped for that. The question is, there is systemic racism in the country, contrary to what he says. They, nothing right. in these bills addresses uh, segregated housing, or, which leads to school segregation, and there's discrimination in employment. That is the problem in right. the country, and it's not being addressed in these bills. These are like uh, rearranging the right. uh, deck chairs on the Titanic. And may I say, stop blaming right. President Obama for everything. This is the Republican playbook right now. From 2010 to 2016, right. both houses of Congress were controlled by the GOP, okay? And remember what right. Mitch McConnell right. said, we're going to stop everything he does. So shut up about about Obama already. Right. So Megan, uh, what did you what were your feelings about the bill? Do you think it went far enough? Yeah, first, uh, I think there's a few things to hit here. The first one is um, when people say Tim Scott is the only black senator on the Republican side, well, Democrats only have two. You have Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, so let's please stop acting like there's great bipartisan representation in the Senate. It's despicable. There aren't more people of color on both sides and all races. It's a huge problem in our representation, but it's not just singularly a Republican one. The second thing is Tim Scott also talked about in 2016 about how he has been targeted by Capitol Police as a senator, where they stopped him and then thought he was impersonating a senator when he was trying to come in, which is also a heartbreaking story. So I, he is a man that has experienced racism. And by the way, he was pulled over seven times in a year, not five. Um, I think it's a good, noble start, this bill. I, I'm glad to see this swift sea change on um, bipartisan support of police reform. I'm really disheartened that um, we can't even come together to 
try and make changes, and I think some of the criticism you gave Sonny is valid, but how about we all continue to try and improve instead of just crapping all over Republicans for saying that they're doing nothing or it's not good enough? This is a very great and noble attempt led by a very distinguished senator on the Republican side, and I would really like to see us all put our differences aside. I know I'm exhausted. I think the country's exhausted to try and really enact real reform right now, and this is the best opportunity, um, as uh, George Floyd's lawyer said yesterday on the show, this is the best time in history to right. do it, and I think we should all just come together and please stop making this, this, this so partisan, because I, for one, am truly exhausted with it. Well, I'm exhausted with all of that I, I have see to tell you, because one, wait, wait, I'm going to, let me finish, let me, please let me finish, because there are things in this bill that need to be dealt with. The GOP <laughs> bill doesn't change qualified immunity which shields police officers from lawsuits. You know, it doesn't expand the Justice Department's power to investigate and prosecute police misconduct. And the reason I'm really all about that is because this could have helped Tamir Rice. If we had information about the police officer who, who took his life, allegedly in his file is a note that says he was mentally unstable to be a police officer. This might have made a difference and how we do things. So if we all have all the information, you know, I mean, they if you can see a way where when we say these are the things that we absolutely absolutely need to have, it's because people's experiences say I don't I didn't have this information. Therefore, when they let this person go, you know, what was I to do? He took my son's life. So there are things that need to happen. And, and, you know, we also have to go with the fact that, you know, in 2015, Obama banned federal transfers of certain types of military uh, gear. In 2017, the it was rescinded. That executive order was rescinded. The Justice Department also aggressively pursued consent decrees approved by the courts, which police departments agreed to and uh, AG Sessions limited that. So we, we, you're right, Megan, we all do have to come together, but we have to come together listening and seeing what everybody's experience is and then making a dis qualified decision. It shouldn't be a left-right decision. It should be a qualified American decision because this affects everybody. That's my point. I'm sorry, Sonny, I cut you off. Yeah. Go ahead real quick. Well, no, you, you, you said what I was just about to say, that the problem is that there is no oh. federal oversight at this point because the Justice Department, right. when Jeff Sessions entered, cut out consent decrees. There is no national right. database. And you cannot leave it up to the states because we see what has happened. We've seen the militarization right. of the police state by state by state. We see this pushback on qualified right. immunity. We see uh, that there is a, not a national no chokehold um, ban. Right. Yeah. We yeah. see that there is it not a national ban well, on Sonny, no knock I, warrants. I it has to be done saying. federally. Right. I hear what you're saying and I think right. it's 100% valid yeah. criticism. I think my frustration is when I come into the show and I see a tease saying, are Republicans doing enough right now after one of the most famous Republican senators mm. is presenting a bill right now? There's no, I think we are trying. My party is trying. And my show is teasing at the beginning. Republicans aren't doing anything. Yes, all this criticism, Whoopi, you and Sonny just said, 100% valid. The chokehold thing is a big deal. I don't understand why that's not in it either. That's fine. Let's continue the conversation. That's why bills have amendments on the floor. That's why this is a bipartisan process. But please stop knocking Republicans this morning for some of us not trying. This well, has been it, a very intense this morning, awakening no, no, for this the American morning, public the past this few morning weeks. It is, and I think this I just don't morning, appreciate that the tease coming into the tomorrow. show. Tomorrow it will be the uh, it'll be the, the Democrats. We 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 punch everybody. We punch on both sides. You know that. But I have to stop well, talking because people are saying we have Sunny, to go. We'll be right back. Yeah. Fair. No, it's about the bigger picture. We'll